selfless service. Everything I've read and all of the experiences I've had um, in my 54 years on this spinning planet have led me to the same place, which is that the secret to reciprocity to the reciprocal universe, the secret to profit is to serve, to serve selflessly. It doesn't mean to serve with no money because you know ex every, everything we do involves an exchange of energy. Sometimes that takes the monetary term, uh, sometimes that's um, delivered in, in a monetary way. It just means that what we do when, it means that when we serve, we serve from an aligned place. We serve from a place of love. So when you look at the Old Testament, the New Testament, you know, the Hindu, the Sikh, the Muslim texts, the Jain texts, the, uh, the Taoist texts, they all talk about the same thing. They all talk about the secret to reciprocity being service to serve other people um, but I find it really interesting that when you start to talk about service people get really upset if you're talking and th first of all people get upset if you talk about service because they think it's a weak option they think there's um, that you're being a hypocrite they think that service can't involve the exchange of money they think that anybody that says they want to serve um, is automatically lying because it's like you're trying to be a great bloke. I find lots, I get lots of these kind of reactions from uninitiated people. Whereas when you understand it, you realize that you, you're serving selflessly because there's joy there, because that's where you connect to love. That's where you connect to logos or purpose or where you connect to God, whatever your name is for it, it doesn't really matter. It's where you connect to bliss. So when you serve from a, from a place of love, when you serve selflessly, the service itself is the reward. That's not something that I've read in a book. I mean, it's, I've read it in books, but it's not something I know from reading in books. It's just been underlined by reading it in books. It's something I know from having lived it, from having done it, from trying all the wrong things, from trying to do all the wrong ways, from being selfish, from being, you know, um, afraid and kind of working from, you know, this is how I don't need to make my mortgage. Uh, this is me, this is me trying to see what's in it for me. This is me on coattails. This is me uh, trying to get what's in it, trying to see what's in it for me. <clears throat> I've been in all those unsatisfactory places and ended up realizing um, that I'm at my happiest when I serve from a place of love. I'm at my happiest when I serve selflessly. And sometimes, as I said, sometimes that service involves um, physical profit. Sometimes it just involves a natural exchange of energy. Sometimes it has a ledger. Sometimes it has a monetary value. Sometimes it doesn't. More often than not, it doesn't. And some people say, well, you know, because money is just an exchange of energy, some people will say that's not the, the best way of exchanging energy. But actually, there's no better or worse way of exchanging energy. If you're serving from love, it doesn't matter whether there's a ledger or not, it's serving from love. The reward itself, the reward is the service itself. And anything physical or material um, is an exponential effect. <coughs> Buckminster Fuller wrote a great book called The Critical Path, which I've written about before. Buckminster Fuller was one of our greatest, one of our greatest inventors, one of our greatest, uh, one of the greatest inventors of our, of our species. But to the age of forty, at, until the age of forty, he'd not really done anything. He'd not really um, achieved anything of any worth in his own words. He had a breakdown because his daughter died, and he decided that he wasn't going to speak for a year because he understood the power of talking and he didn't want to do any damage. He recognised, as it says in the Quran, that every breath, every breath um, is the same breath as the Messiah. But if we haven't got control of what we say, we can damage. If we have got control of what we say, we can heal. 
So he recognised that at that point he didn't really know what he was saying. So until he knew what he was saying, he was going to say nothing at all. He looked back at his life. He did a chapter in the book called The Guinea Pig Self, where he said, um, I looked at all the things I've done in my life and looked at all the things that were successful. And he said, where I was disproportionately successful was when I did things for other people without any thought of profit. When I, where I was disproportionately successful was where I did things spontaneously without thinking. And so he said, that's when I found the most joy, when I found the most creativity, when he found the biggest ideas from a spontaneous, intuitive place. So he decided that's what he was going to do from then on in. Just do things that served other people. Just do things that served millions of people. He wasn't trying to be a great bloke. He was working from a place of compulsion. He said when he worked, when he served other people, when he saw other people that were troubled, or where they saw a need in the world, he felt a compulsion to help. Whereas when he was younger, he often just ignored that compulsion and thought, yeah, other people are in trouble, but I need to make my mortgage. I need to make the rent. I need to buy food. I need to get my own wants. What he realized was that when he put other people first and he followed that intuitive compulsion, all of the things he wanted came anyway. It took a while, you know, he said, you know, he had to do things to make the rent initially, but he said he didn't want to do anything ever again just for money. He wanted to do things that came from love. They involved making money, but they came from love and the money was exponential. So the secret, he said, the seventh stage of man's development was the stage of selfless service, where the, act, where the service was the, the service itself. was the reward. The service itself was the reward because there was joy. When you, when you have that exchange of spontaneous energy and there's no thought of ledgers or money, everything you want comes. First of all, you experience joy because you feel the dissolution or the desolation of separation. So there's no longer a separation between you and the person you're serving. You just feel at one with them. And there's a real bliss in that. So when you feel that bliss, you want to experience it again and again and again. So if you're talking to a 15 year old kid who doesn't trust any men, who will say to him, I don't trust men, because he's, since he's been born, he's seen his dad drag his mum out of bed at four in the morning by the hair um, and rape her and bang her head off every sharp object in the house. And they're about to flee to the police at you know three or four in the morning. Um, and there's absolute terror at the sight of men or, or you know when you meet a, a, a prisoner who's murdered somebody and is completely lost because he says What's, what hope is there for me if I've murdered somebody what can I do, where can I go, my, my life is over or they've committed some crime or if you meet a businessman who is, who is in the ninth circle of hell even though he's materially successful he's lost his soul somewhere on the way. When you meet these people and they're troubled and they're in pain, you feel compelled to help them. They don't trust anybody. This kid doesn't trust anybody. And you feel there's a, there's a compulsion to want to tell them your story, to say, I understand pain. I understand that feeling of not trusting anybody. I understand um, the fact that you've got material things, but you're still not happy. I understand the fact that you can't find love and you can't find love because you, why would anybody love you? When I was younger, I, used to, I didn't trust anybody because why would anybody love me? The man I idolized as an 11 year old sexually abused me. People let me down, I felt abandoned. And even though that wasn't true, even though I wasn't abandoned, I mean, I was sexually assaulted and, I, but, you know, and obviously I was hurt, but it doesn't mean you can't trust anybody in the world, but it just make, makes you feel as though you're, you're a piece of shit. Then you go into the world from that perception and learn to mistrust yourself. So you can't trust anybody. Um, and, and you think everybody will betray you because you're a piece of shit on their shoe. I used to actually feel like I was a piece of shit. That was a perception. So when you're in front of those people, when I'm around those people now, if I'm working with people and I'm mentoring, or basically just going out and telling my story, even when I'm doing this now, I'm, I'm hoping that I'm doing this and I'm talking to some kid at four in the morning, he's woke up and he's depressed and he's, he's got a cold, he's woke up with a cold sweat because of his depression, because of his terror. 
because of his um, fear of the world. I'm hoping that they're going to watch this and they will feel the fact that I want to serve them, that I, that I love them. I know that's a big thing to say, but I, but I believe it and I feel it because I don't see a separation between me and other people. Muhammad said that man is the brother of man, whether he likes it or not. Um, so I want to serve people, I want to help people, I want to, I want to um, contribute. It doesn't mean you say yes to everything, because sometimes you serve people more when you say no. You say no I can't, but this is how you can do what you need to do. You know, we still have to work in the world and, you know, there's, um, I always had this fear myself, I used to say to Sharon, I'm really worried because I don't think I'm helping enough people. She said, do you look after the people that God puts in front of you? I said, yeah. She said, then you're doing all you need to do. Look after the people that are placed in front of you. If he places too many people in front of you, I'll help you with it. If there's too many people for both of us, then we'll find other people to help. If there's too many people for them to help, then we'll create more books. There'll be a demand for more books. You'll have more books in the world. That, so you can duplicate yourself six million times, 10 million times. Or like Paolo Coelho, 150 million times. So you can serve people by duplicating yourself. So that people can pick up The Alchemist at four in the morning by Paolo Coelho when they're, when they're cold with sweat and depressed and fearful and find some balm in there. So when I talk about the fact that I found service and I want to serve, it's not about being a great bloke and it's not about being hypocritical it's about the fact that it's a compulsion I can't stop myself if I see someone that's hurt and I see someone that's in pain I want to try and do something I don't think I do enough I think I could do more I'm trying to get better at doing more because there's obviously still a part of me that's selfish that looks after my own stuff there's still a part of me that's afraid because what, what have I got to how can I help anybody who am I that's the voice that comes up um, I worry sometimes that there's just not enough hours in the day because there seems to be a need that's greater than my ability to serve it. But that's okay as well because I only need to look after the people that are placed in front of me. And some people might need three hours and some people might, might need just uh, a replied email or a returned letter or return phone call. It's not everybody that needs you to spend you know, the next five years with them. Some people just need you to acknowledge them. So. It's that feeling of when you're in front of someone that's in pain, just that, you think, fucking, I just want to help this person. I just want to help them. How can I help them? What's the best thing I can give this person? The best thing I can give that person is my story and say, this is what I've learnt. This is the elixir of my journey. They call it the hero's journey from Joseph Campbell's book, um, a, hero of a Hero of a Thousand Faces. It's about mythology, it's about the hero's journey. It's about um, separation from the reality we know. It's about initiation into a new reality and learning new things. It's about the return, coming back and telling your story. Jonathan Livingston Siegel is a great book about this hero's journey. Star Wars is the hero's journey, the Matrix is the hero's journey. We come back, we tell our story. We stand in front of people and we just say, um, I'm not going to try and tell you how to live, I'm just going to tell you my story. And you tell them the true story. You tell them exactly how it is, how, exactly what you've experienced. So it's that feeling of, I want to serve people because it's hugely profitable for me to serve people because when I serve people from an aligned place, from a place of love, I feel bliss, I feel expansion, I feel the dissolution and the desolation, the desolation of separation. I feel as though I've found my dharma and I can do that through writing books which I've done with The Caretaker which has just come out now. I can do that with talks, I can do that with articles, I can do that with films, I'm doing some films and some theatre at the moment um, and I'm doing, uh, I can do it through um, podcasts like I'm doing here. I'm trying to find as many ways of doing it as possible, as many ways of serving as possible because it's profitable. Because when I serve, when I, when I talk to you now, it serves me because 
to talk from an aligned place, which I do, and to talk from love, which I do, I have to access an aligned place, I have to access love, I have to process that through 100 billion cells. And when I do that, when I deliver love to you, I process love in every cell of my body. So I'm blissed out with love myself. And as I do that more and more, it acts as a cyclical cleansing, it cleans me. To deliver love cleans me. To deliver elixir takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of courage because when you process love and deliver it to other people from a selfless place, it washes you, it cleans away any, resi any residues, any residuals. It's painful, it's blissful, but it's painful because as this um, essence comes through the tabernacle or through the ark or through the conduit, it cleans away any old scripts, any old pain, any of the old stuff, you know, that shouldn't be there anymore. It gets rid of duality and brings you back to unity. If you're going to deliver love, you have to be united, you have to be aligned. I used to wonder when I used to teach, I still teach a lot now, but in the early days when I used to teach, I used to come, I used to feel blissed and aligned when I taught. And then afterwards I'd come away and feel like a, a piece of shit and I used to feel terrible and I just have all these voices running around in my head and these voices would say, who do you think you are? You're nobody. What was that shit you was talking and fucking, you know, you're a hypocrite and all of these negativities come up. You're a piece of shit. Lots of old scripts. And I used to think, why do I feel so good when I teach and then I feel bad afterwards? And of course it's because in connecting to alignment, I've, I've denied the sovereignty of old scripts. I've washed, I've cleansed myself internally. So I learned that after, I was, after I'd been speaking and after I'd accessed um, a essence, these old scripts would be swimming about and dislodged and I just had to let them process and come out. So rather than identify with these old scripts and these voices as, rose, as they rose up, I would just observe them. I would observe them and let them process and let them transcend. I would observe without engagement. I would observe without identifying. I would just be aware of them coming up, going out. So if I write a great article from, a, from an aligned place, it cleans me. If I do this talk, it's a gift to you, but it's a gift to me because it cleans me. When I write a book, The Caretaker is a very aligned book. It's a very beautiful book. It's full of essence. I don't feel in any way worthy of delivering a book so beautiful. But of course it's come through me and it's cleaned me as it's come through. And now that I'm putting it into the world, the putting it into the world is also cleaning me because all the little doubts that I have about who am I and is it any good and all the rest of it will be washed through. So the more I do this, the more cleaned I will become, the more cleansed I will become. So I just keep working from an aligned place. I keep turning up. I keep doing the talks. I keep delivering. I keep writing the books. I keep writing the scripts because I want to serve. I want to make a difference. I want to change the world. I'm, only, I'm aware I can only do that if I change me. And the reason the world glows when you find this aligned place is because it's, it's a reflection of what's glowing in you. If you're gold on the inside, everything you, look, everything you look at is gold. Everything looks like gold. If you're dark on the inside, everything will look dark. That's why they say if you, every man that reads the Quran writes the Quran. Every man that reads the Bible writes the Bible. Everybody that reads the Tao Te Ching writes the Tao Te Ching and they will all read they will all write and read it from their perspective your god will take the shape of your perception so me serving is selfish uh, what charles handy would call proper selfish as in it serves me but it will serve other people only if it's aligned only if it's coming from truth um only if it's coming from love, which it is. So selfless service is the secret to reciprocity. It's the secret to cause and effect, the reciprocal universe. If we want to go out and be successful in the world, just find loads of people to serve. 
and there's a technique even if you don't believe it and of course you should doubt it you shouldn't take my word for anything nor anybody's word you should just have a look at the fruits of my life is it coming from the right place if you think it is then go out and practice it and try it for yourself and the, and the technique is every time you're in front of somebody every time you're in front of someone with business or with relationships or with anything you're doing every time you're in front of people the technique is to say in your mind to your higher self please show me how to serve this people P please show me how to serve this person excuse me or these people please show me what these people need to hear please show me how to bring these people balm please show me how to uh, bring healing to these people that's what the caretaker is really about it's, a, it's about a guy that's looking for gold who finds love it's about a guy that's looking for profit who finds service it's about a guy that's self selfishly looking for gain um, and find abundance through the service of others, through being a caretaker, through being the inlet and the outlet to infinite energy, to abundant energy. It's got to be hugely practical. It's got to work with your finances. It's got to work with your health. It's got to work with your relationships. Otherwise, what's the point of it? There's no point to it at all. It's got to be practical in the world. People have needs. Those needs need to be met. And we can show them how to do that by telling them our story. I know there's people out there watching this now who have great stories, who don't feel worthy of telling their stories, because who am I? If you've got a story and there's truth in that story, there's essence or there's elixir, and you have the courage to tell that story, there'll be people to listen to it. And once they know that you want to tell the story, they'll be queuing up to hear it. So, we're working in the world, so we've got to make it work in the world. Um, and I've tried it every which way and ended up in a place where I just really want to experience what I experience when I work from that aligned place, when I work from that essential place. Um, and I can categorically say that the The service itself is the reward. The service is the reward. And everything else is a bonus. And when you work from that place, everything you want will fall into alignment. It's very beautiful, very simple. So simple that people fall over it and get up and walk away like as though nothing happened because it's so simple. Or because they're, or because they're, and, and they're often offended by the simplicity of it. They're offended by the fact that it's so simple. It, that can't be it. It can't be as easy as that. But it is, it's very simple. So try it. And the practical technique is when you're in business, when you're uh, in relationships, when you're in the world, just say to yourself before the meeting, before, you know, when, whenever you're with people, when you're talking, please show me how to serve this person. Please show me how to serve this person from an aligned place. And when you do that, you'll realize, uh, they will realize at some level that you want to serve them and that you're putting yourself second to them and they'll want to work with you. They'll want to do more with you. They'll want to hear what you've got to say. And you'll probably be one of the only people in the room, in the town, in the city, in the world doing it. Very few people are doing it because people don't see that there's profit in it. Um, and the profit is bliss. Um, but it's not just bliss. The exponential effect of that is all of the toys, all of the material things that you want to work with, that you want to experience, they're all fine. They're all um, byproducts of purpose or logos. Everything. There's nothing that isn't God. There's nothing that doesn't come from logos. Every single thing. If you take a block of gold and break it up into ten thousand pieces of jewelry, jewelry and scatter them across the world, it doesn't matter that this that they've been separated and scattered. They all come from the same block of gold. So there's nothing out there that doesn't come from essence. There's nothing out there that doesn't come from exactly the same place. So there's nothing wrong with enjoying the world. And if you are living palatially on the inside, you will live palatially on the outside because everything will glitter. But service is the key. And it's not about being a great bloke. It's just about recognizing that's where the profit is. That's where I'm going to work. That's where the bliss is.